night on the online wine tasting club, Alex decided that learning German is a mammoth task. Weasling obsessed Jamie decides to get an amateur tattoo in the shape of a wine bottle. But most importantly, we send our support to a country who has just experienced all the power of the climate. So tonight we're visiting Germany to explore the home of the favourite of wine geeks all around the world, Riesling. So, we're here for a very, very serious tasting. So I've dressed the parts. We're here to celebrate the 31 days of German Riesling. Lots of Riesling, lots of fun, lots of great stuff. So we're gonna have some fantastic Riesling tonight. There's a lot of common misconceptions about Rieslings. You know, if I had a pound, if everyone told me, oh, I don't like Riesling, it's a bit sweet, guess what? I would definitely have a few quid. Uh, personally, you may well be able to tell, I might have a, a slight obsession, slight obsession with Riesling. Um, I love the stuff, I think it's great. It goes from being this beautiful, dry, so much acidity, it makes your eyes water, to this like decadently sweet that you just don't need to have dessert anymore and everything in between. So, a reason, it grows all over the world. There's some great Riesling in Australia, in the Eden and Clare Valley. I'm a big fan of, you know, Riesling from Austria, up in the, in the Vakau, really, really good. But Germany has been doing it for as long as they have. They've got amazing regions, amazing styles, so we're gonna dive deep into that tonight. And it's tough. I had to pick six, we could only do six. There's so many out there, but this should hopefully give you a little snapshot as to what we're doing. You know, we look at the bottles, we look at the labels, there's, there's, there's lots of things, lots of weird words, and German wine law is a little bit, little bit tough sometimes. So we're gonna try and demystify that a little bit, we're gonna drink the wine, we're gonna talk about petrol and Riesling and sweetness and weird things like that. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, you know, differentiate your cabinets from your house laces, your trockens from your hard trockens, your qualitas vine from your land vines, and even your gross lags from your gross specs, and see where we get. But what's important tonight is we're gonna, we're gonna take some reasoning, we're gonna open it, we're gonna put it in the glass, just like that, and then we're gonna drink it. Then we might get another reasoning, put that in the glass, drink that as well. But what I'm really, really gonna try is keep the puns low, because it's very serious. But just remember, everything happens for a Riesling. Oh, dearie me. We can't help the puns, can we? Well, I finally found something to do with your shirts. <laughs> he does. The, these, these were beautifully provided by Wines of Germany, specifically when they saw our earlier videos and, and the shirts. They thought Jamie's eyes did need a bit of protection. But good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's, as you may well tell I might have a slight obsession with Riesling and it is the 31 days of German Riesling right now so um, I would have liked to have done 31 but we've, we've done yeah. six. Um, so what we've got, we've got, you know, as I've said, you know, Riesling, Riesling is great. It goes from bone dry to really sweet and everything in between. Um, it can be sometimes seem a little bit complicated but tonight That's because is... it is. <laughs> Oh. You need a PhD. So the, when the Germans decide oh, we're going to simplify this system to make it easy to understand, they add another layer of complexity. It's brilliant. It's an absolute but genius. But every time you drink a Riesling, you get another layer of complexity as well. That is true. That is so true. So we're going to drink through. We're going to have fun. So let's get wine number one in the glass straight away, which is the Anton Fickenauer Trocken. I don't even need to tell people what the... Uh what the grape is this this month no that's true so this this sits in, in the dry style and it, it's trocken it says that and we will do a little bit of uh, just a little quick german wine law bit in, in a while but i thought we should at least get a couple of glasses of wine done first because yeah as well you know, as trying to translate some of the more complicated words like mammoth and things like that important things important like that. very but important as always we're in the chat so if we're going off at a tangent tell us to shut up and talk about normal things um but lots of fun there's lots of cool stuff to do so anton finger now um we can start, probably start straight away and start getting your tasting notes in there. Um, 
So, you know, as always, get your tasting notes in. Um, there's Poly V at the bottom, so we need to dive in. That's a bonus, isn't it? That's great. You just need to move this a little bit more and everyone will be all right. <laughs> so, Anton Finkenauer, they're in the Nahe, and this is a very dry style of Riesling. We're sitting at about five grams of residual sugar. And as we go through, we'll talk a little bit more about what, yeah. what those ranges are and what that compares to. Because if you just chuck a random number and go, this has got 47 grams of sugar, what, what, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, but I just think this, this is a great wine to start with. Um, you know, they make about 60,000 bottles a year, um, but it's dry, it's crisp, it's elegant, um, absolutely beautiful. You know, it's that off dry, zippy, zingy kind of wine. Um, but yeah. Oh, some good notes coming in. I love someone's putting in custard. Excellent. By the way, I think if you've been slightly irritated by the fact that you can't put in multiple words, I think it might have fixed that now. So I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that you might be able to put in, say, Green apple or something like that. If or you Jamie is great, and it all yeah, sits are, together. Unlikely to be that. But so, yeah. what I think we need to do, though, mm -hmm. we, we, we can, we're going to talk about reasoning all night. But I think Germany is people just think it is just reasoning, and there is mm. a little bit more to Germany. So maybe we should go to a video explaining a little bit about German wine, German history, where it's going, just so we've got a little bit of a concept of what else is going on, and then we can dive back into the reasoning. So we'll drink wine number one during the video. We'll come back, talk a bit more about it, get onto wine number two, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's talk a bit about Germany Sounds in a video. Sounds good to me. And apologies to anyone who's on the Discoverer series if there's a fair bit of overlap, but enjoy it anyway. Germany, industrial powerhouse, economic giants, sporting legends, and all of this despite being split in half for more than 40 painful years. This is not just a country of magnificent cities, it has beautiful countryside and some real geography going on. Vast rivers, huge mountains, pristine forests, and even geothermal spas. It's a country that I hold in very high regards. For more than 10 years, I worked for Deutsche Telekom and regularly visited. And when we did, we'd often go out drinking in Bonn. But here's the thing, we would always choose beer. And there is no denying that beer is what Germany's most famous for. There are fabulous, clean, local-made Kölsch, Weissenbeers, Pilsner, so on. It is cheap, high quality, and incredibly varied. And when we moved on from beer, it would often be to schnapps, the popular flavoured spirit drinks, fruit brandies, herbal infusions. But we never got tempted to go for wine. Surprisingly, it was only really around the 16th century that beer became the most popular drink. Before that, it was wine. Today, Germany is arguably the most distinctive major producer of wine in Europe, and is the fourth largest too. But much of this never leaves the region, and it is difficult. Perhaps aside from the crazy world of Italian wines, it is one of the hardest to understand, with its baffling naming conventions, labels and laws, not to mention the chance of picking up a bottle and finding that it's, well, a lot sweeter than you'd thought you were getting. And for sure, when many people think of German wine, the image it's trying hard to overcome is its reputation for cheap, mass-marketed, semi-sweet wines. But don't feel blue. None of that this evening. Oh, Jamie. Ah, oh, you can spot who wrote this part of the script, can't you? Anyway, moving on from that, Germany is often admired for its elegant, aromatic white wines like Riesling, favourites with Somms all around the world. But there is so much more to discover that we're going to try lots of different types from a few different regions. To give you a bit of context, let's talk about the history. German winemaking dates back to Roman times, and even as late as the 18th century, some of the traditional Roman techniques were still in use. Spiced wines were most popular before 1500, before whites took over, and then they moved on to heavier reds to ward off competition from Italian and French wine. The 16th century saw the wine industry go into decline, partly because of excessive expansion, and a slump therefore in the price and then quality of wine, but then the Thirty Years' War ravaged pretty much every part of the country. And it had a huge effect. Before this, there was four times the area of vineyards that there are today. In the 1800s, Napoleon conquered all of Germany to the west of the Rhine, and the vineyards were taken from the church and divided up. With industrialization, the labor force moved into the cities and vineyards were now in real trouble. To try to counter this, the emphasis shifted to quality, and a famous wine law was passed in 1892, trying to make producers up their game. It wasn't perfect though, so it was revised in 1901, and in 1909, and again in 1930, and yet again in 1971. These laws introduced naming standards and insisted that wines were checked by committees for faults to earn permission to be labelled as a quality wine. 
One of the big things they were trying to overcome was producers who, rather than waiting for the grapes to ripen naturally, would harvest early and then chuck a bunch of sugar in. You won't be surprised to hear that this didn't have a good effect on the quality of the wine. So, the 1971 version of the law introduced what's called the Predicat system. Uh, more terminology. Anyway, this was based on grape ripeness, and it ensured that the sweetness level in that initial grape juice was all 100% natural. James is going to come back to that later to tell you how you can decipher these different labels. Good luck with that. Now, the first half of the 20th century was, of course, a period of serious crisis for German viticulture, with economic strain across the whole country. We've all seen the wheelbarrows full of cash. There were also some terrible vintages for weather, and I think something else might have happened, but I can't quite remember. Back in the 1930s, some of the merchants, particularly those selling to the UK, decided to focus on branding instead of complicated regions and vineyard names and so on. Instead, they mixed wines from different regions into semi-sweet, mass-produced, blended wines like Liebfraumilch, which started to become immensely popular around the world. And from 1950 to 1990, the vineyard area started expanding rapidly again as German wine exports took off. They then started to work those vineyards really hard. Rather than growing a few highly flavoured grapes, the growers pushed the vines to produce more than five times as much weight of grapes than they did at the beginning of the century. That also didn't have a great impact on the quality. After 1970, there was considerable development and the new quality control laws came into effect. This did start to change things and growers started to make some really incredible wine and it became easier to tell the two different styles apart. However, those old sweet blends started to go out of fashion and certainly tarnished the reputation of German wine. So tonight, we're going to let you try six much higher quality wines and show you how big the difference can be. These wines show off the dramatic places in which they grow because Germany is an incredibly dramatic country. It's somehow simultaneously flat and mountainous, rugged and smooth, green, rocky, hot, cold, wet, dry, misty, you get it all. Across 13 different wine growing regions, you find very different soils and different climates. But even within these regions, the difference between going a few hundred metres around a bend on a river can produce a completely different temperature and a different flavour to the wine from the same grapes. On top of this, thousands of growers and winemakers shape the distinctive profiles of their wines into different quality categories and styles. And this means we have a lot to explore because that is what guarantees the special, distinctive diversity of German wines. So what does Germany look like from a wine point of view? Well, apart from a few exceptions, it's mostly concentrated in the southwest, where the weather's slightly warmer. Germany is traditionally seen as a cool climate country for wine. Being in the north of Europe, there are moderate summer temperatures which traditionally produced lower alcohol wine. But with global warming, this is changing. Another defining fact of the country is that many of Germany's best and most famous vineyards are on incredibly steep slopes overlooking the rivers. Here, the only thing that's suitable to grow commercially is grapes. But these steep slopes which gather the sun so well and give excellent drainage are impossible to work on with tractors and automatic tools. Almost everything must be done by hands. Today, we see wine increasing in popularity in Germany, especially in the young, and a new funky natural wine scene is coming up. Even within family-run wineries, a younger, more global generation of winemakers are bringing in what they've learned and trying out new things, just to experiment and see what works well on these quite amazing sites. And it's working. Around the world, German wines are gaining greater and greater reputation and recognition for being truly world-class. So we've done history, geography, what grows where, and now hopefully you understand what the hock is going on. Dear God, Jamie, I need to start censoring these. Anyway, let's get back to the studio and see what you thought of wine number one. Hello and welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little introduction to Germany. Obviously, Riesling is produced, I think, in every single region of Germany. Um, it's perhaps the only grape that is made every every part of the country. But it is a it is a vast difference between you know you go off to the the far east and the old eastern Germany near Dresden um, and in the Saxon region that that produces it, it seems to focus more on some some different grapes like you know uh, more arom well it's a fairly aromatic grape isn't it but yeah. you've got you've got more of the sort of Gruner and things like that over there but over over here uh, over in Naha which is sort of just the kind of the western side of the country um, and um, and and this is producing something that is it's 
technically not quite bone dry, but there's a lot of people who are saying that it is a really dry wine. And it is actually drier than a lot of Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand are. So that is what to I like the, I like the touch of that, wine for sushi. So I've got, I've got really exciting news for everybody out there today. Alex is monitoring the chat, so make oh, sure the yes. questions are really hard <laughs> and really difficult, and it's a good chance to test his skills. Um, and if he can't answer it, <laughs> we'll give you a prize. Oh, come on, that's just unfair. So, so we do have one question, which is, what is the 31 days of German Riesling? Now, um, and that's a very good question, because we're talking about this as if everybody knows. It's, it's Obviously, it's a marketing effort by Wines of Germany. What they believe is that it takes 31 days to make a habit, rather than just being a wine that you drink every now and then, and then go back to picking up a you know, a, something with square brackets around it, for example. Um, and, you know, the, it... It, it's a really good point because there is such variety that you could spend a month drinking a different reason each day and finding different nuances and completely different styles. Only, only a month? Only, well, he could probably spend several years. But, um, yeah, we, um, we, we, look, we opened two the other day and we were looking at it and the colours are um, absolutely... There was practically no colouring. It was, it was completely translucent. And then the other was dark and yellow and you could barely believe that these were the same grapes. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it is re reasoning is a very kind of it's it's a grape that sommeliers like and enjoy and seem to seem to love lots yeah. um, because it is so versatile. It mm -hmm. can be really, really dry and fresh and aromatic and you know slightly spritzy like this. And then we can go to the other end that you know you go oh this is going to rot my teeth out. There's so much sugar in it and everywhere in between. It's you know. There's not many grapes that you can do that with. You've probably got Riesling that goes from very, very dry to sweet. And um, you can also get sparkling Rieslings now. Um, I think yeah. the only other grape that I know that does that very, very well is maybe Chenin Blanc to have yeah. that kind of massive, massive range. But it's a wine that you can set out in the sunshine and drink. It's a wine that you can have with food. You know, and a fair chunk of them are relatively low alcohol compared to you know a lot of other you know 12 12 and a half percent you know is kind of pushing high end sometimes yeah, yeah. you know you see a lot of eight nine percents and you look at you know you go to california where there's a bit of sunshine and chardonnay you're seeing chardonnay's at 14 or 15 percent yeah. now so totally it's, different wine. it's fresh it's good yeah. drinking it's not you know massively high in alcohol but I think the versatility is what, what makes it exciting. Yeah. Um, you and know, the, the flavours are so subtle that they work with some really subtle, gently flavoured foods where you don't want to overpower the food you're eating, which is why I like the person who said, um, not shirt. Uh, it sushi. Was there, yeah, someone who's saying well, it's a wine for sushi. It absolutely is. You've got that uncooked salmon. You haven't got all the, the, the flavour of the, the crisping it up from you know applying a lot of heat and that sort of Maillard reaction that brings out all sorts of great strong flavors you've got the subtle flavors of these these things going on and I think what why for me why sommeliers and um, you know wine reviewers love it so much is that even when it gets at high levels of really ripe uh, right big ripeness in the grape there's a lot of sugar in that grape it keeps that acidity and and that then cuts through absolutely Re reason just has this 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 level of purity about it, yeah. you know, the people aren't messing around with oak barrels or Lisa, you know, and there's some people do whatever they do, but generally, you know, we're, we're bright, we're fresh, and it, it's all about the grape, it's all about the vineyard site, it's all about the wine making. It's, you can't hide, like, bad Riesling, you can't hide bad Riesling, you know, you go, oh, that's not well made, but, you know, and there's a lot of things that you can add, yeah. a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of oak, a bit of a blend, but this, you don't get it right, and you're in trouble. Anyway, I'm going to get some wine too in the glass. You, you, you should, but I'm, I'm just going to quickly answer a, a, a couple of comments, because we've got Caroline Alt, who has joined us, having had a really good time on the Discoverer series, and having tried the Riesling from from last week and that was a um, that was that was a, a totally different style to this wasn't it and you know you had this slightly sweet one so she is trying to build that habit and i say well done caroline that's great great to see so uh, top marks there build the habit build the habit do i like reasoning i don't know i might just do it for the tattoos and the sunglasses yeah yeah in in indeed <laughs> less said about that the better but um yeah i think um um let's let's move the tasting notes on to wine wine number two i think i think dan's done that thank you producer he's ahead, um, of, ahead of the game, totally ahead of the game. game. so we're, we're heading to um to a little a, a winery called vigmola which is um uh, two sisters who work together they've been making wine together since 1984 
four. So they've been doing it for a, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's good. And this is the 11th generation of this family making wine. Um, they make so, some other bits and pieces as well. They make a, they make a wonderful Sherebe. They do uh, a couple that of reds and things. That was one of the things. wines tonight, last week. It was, was wasn't absolutely. Wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the best grape that no one had ever heard of. Kind of well, thing. apart from Dornfelder. We, so we, there were two grapes that really came out well from the last week's tasting. And they were the ones that nobody had heard of before. So, so that's really cool. I, 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 I popped up on Twitter. It's fantastic to see that it, you can not be scared of these things if you're getting the chance to just try it. But yeah, um, Wegmuller, um, lovely, lovely pair of sisters, but um, they've got quite a story to them, haven't they? Absolutely. So we're, we're over in the faults now. Um, still dry-ish, 7.7 yeah. 7 grams, which when we go up the level, we'll see that this isn't very much at all. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of, you know, a little bit above a, a kind of a dry or brute champagne kind of level, um, if we want to have another wine that has that similar level of sugar. So it's still not sweet by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't even class this as off dry, but it's got some nice fruit to it. Um, and uh, Wigmuller and the Falz, 90% of their vineyards in this area are called Hud, which is the, the best places, the best slopes, all that kind of good stuff. However, I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, but uh, last week I had a, had a little chat with, uh, with Gabby, who's one of the sisters uh, over there. So it's probably best for her to tell the story of this wine. And then we'll it, come it, back. It probably in. is. We, we have had a request for more dad puns. So I do hope that, uh, I do hope that you've managed There's to get... There's been a request. I hope you managed to cram a few of those in. But um, yes, we'll see what we've <laughs> careful got. what you wish for is all what I say. But let's go, let's go and hear what, uh, what they had to say there. Herzlich willkommen in Weingut Wegmüller. Zum Wohl. So, well, um, my name is Gabriel Wegmüller, and I spell it Gabriel because uh, Gabriele is the German word for my first name, and it's very difficult to pronounce normally. And um, my sister and me, we uh, had run, I have to say, we had run the winery now for um, 30, 40 years almost. And uh, my sister Stephanie, she was uh, one of the first or the first female winemaker ever in Germany. She started to do her um, wine business um, by herself in 84. She got an uh, apprenticeship at Wasserman Jordan and uh, there she was from 77 to uh, 79. Uh, and then from 81 to 82, no, 80 to 82, two years she was uh, at uh, Weinsberg and studied uh, wine technical business. And then she came to our winery in 82. And uh, in 84, she uh, started to do our wines. And um, well, and uh, I came to join here in 88. She asked me if I would love to, uh, she needs somebody for the office, she told me. And uh, then I said, well, uh, let's try. I don't know how it works with two sisters. And now we were not only sisters, but we worked together 33 years this year. And I think that's a good point to say, yes, you can be sisters, of course, you are sisters and you can work also together. And um, uh, the winery is around about 15 hectares big. Well, build up, it's been uh, the roots going back to 1685. Uh, the first Wegmiller came around 1650 from Switzerland and um, to Germany. And um, the first known then uh, for the winery, the first vineyard is uh, written down on 85, 1685. 
And um, we do have around about 15 hectares. Most of it is Riesling, more than 50%. And then the second one is uh, now already the Scheurebe. And then you have Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris. We do have Müller Thurgau. We have a little bit of Canada. We have um, quite a bit of red wine grapes. Also, we do have Pinot Noir and Merlot. We do have the, the Elegante. It's the lightest one of all our three character Rieslings. And it's grown up on more sandy soil. Uh, in our region heart, you find very deep loam, Merkel, clay, um, rich buttons, and you have many, many sandstones as well. And uh, the, the, the Mandelring is mostly a sandy soil. So it's a very light Riesling. And there the balance between acidity and uh, residual sugar is also very, very nice. And you can store it, you can drink it now. It's vintage 2019, um, which Hallgarten has uh, in her um, portfolio. And um, you have a nice um, nose from um, lemon, ripe apple, and a long finish as well. As all our wines you use, uh, you drink, you have all in our wines a very long, long finish. It's great to show something that has this bright acidity. It's dry. It's a fantastic, fantastic food wine with something a little bit spicy. Asian style food is absolutely beautiful but yeah no thank you very much for popping on quickly yeah, um just to get you, these Jamie. tasting notes so we can get them out um really excited yep. to get this uh cut and edited i just hope people don't notice too much that i've got a different shirt and a different background <laughs> halfway through the interview but hey we can they make do that. i so have a um, nice day thank you for talking to you absolute pleasure thank you very much so have a nice day bye bye Cheers. jamie bye Cheers. Welcome back to the studio. Um, we've we've been enjoying seeing what people are people are are, are drinking and eating along with that tonight. Um, I've got a few people who've got some cheese pairings and a few people who are choosing more stronger flavored things. And um, uh, the, the the fascinating thing, if you go with something like a bratwurst, there's definitely the fact that the acidity will help cut through. But yeah, certainly there's 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 some strong flavors going on there. But you know, it, why not? It, it, it still should be refreshing and enjoyable, even if you don't get the absolute best out of the wine. So um, we're getting some great tasting notes of lemon, hay. Oh, yeah, we've got some pepper salami people are eating as well. Fenugreek smell. Fantastic. Mm. I like that. Unleaded petrol. Unleaded petrol. So, yeah. Good, we'll job, not, good the, job there's no four star. We don't want to smell like four we, star. We, we do not or want diesel. that smell. And we want it to be five star. Um <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, this, there's definitely there's people talking about some of these really ripe fruits. And as the grapes get a little bit riper, which gives you a little bit more of that sugar, you get some of the more ripe flavours. But here's the interesting thing. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but... You're wrong. On many things, but on this I hope I'm right. And which is that as you add a bit of the sugar into the wine, it helps to just slightly draw out some of those flavours of fruit and enhance them. And one of the cool things that we do, um, you know, when we're doing, um, for, for making sparkling wine, like Champagne English Sparkling Wine or Zecht in, um, in Germany, you do what's called a dosage trial. And you sit there and you put tiny little bits of extra, uh, extra sugar syrup into this, uh, the wine, um, after it's been fermented to fully dry. And you just try to see exactly how it's it's reacting, and it's it's crazy to see the difference that sugar has to not just flavors of sweetness, but real perception of physical fruits that you you actually eat. It's a it's something you've got to try. Um, it's a, it's a cool it is, thing. This, this, this is you know this, this level as we go up is really interesting because you know the vast majority of white wines that we drink on a day to day basis are dry wines. Mm -hmm. And they have these fruity characteristics. So I spend my whole life telling people not to get sweet, not sweet. and yeah. fruity <laughs> confused. Because we pick something up and, you know, we have a, you know, a wine that tastes of honeysuckle and mm. melon and things like that. And nine times out of ten, they're not sweet. But something tastes of honey and you go, well, that reminds me of something sweet. So therefore you get sweet. So let's not get sweet versus with actually sweetness in the wine whether if it's sweet or not is just a fact is there sugar or no sugar yeah, yeah. Um, but we can have these sweet flavors 
the reminders okay. of things being yeah. sweet because that's what comes from the grape. And you've got some super, super ripe things in there, like, you know, the grapefruits and, the, you know, I, I, think, I think nectarines and stone fruits, that's, that's a really key sign what, that you're getting what, into what, that I, what I love about these tasting notes that come from, if I, if I pick up the tasting notes I have here from, from the wine making themselves, yeah. it kind of matches, you know. You, you, Which is you, good. <laughs> everyone at home knows what's going on. I'm going to be out of a job soon. Now we it's it's funny because people talk about um there was a quite controversial little comment on one of our Facebook posts the other day which was wine tasting is nonsense you can't tell this and they said they made this quote about how some experts were were given a glass of white wine which had some red food coloring in and thought that it was a red wine and absolutely you can be fooled you can be fooled but before we went live someone popped up on Twitter um, a, a glass of wine, a photo of a glass of wine that they were drinking, and um, some tasting notes. They said it was, you know, a taste of blueberries and a little bit of leather and granite and these kind of things, and described the tannins. And I showed it to Jamie, and in three guesses, he got to within 39 miles of the right winery, which is <laughs> fairly cool. So it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's very easy to get fooled, but there is, there is, there is some, there is some real, you know, some, some, some. Fact behind there it there are well. some solid markers as yeah. to what a wine tastes like and where it should be from. Yeah. But there's always, so, you know, <clears throat> you can be very general, but there's a lot of people out there that we go, oh, if it's big, oaky Chardonnay, it's going to be Australian or California, potentially. But then there's some amazing California Chardonnay that uses no oak at all. You know, there's some places in Burgundy that just use stainless steel. There's some places in Burgundy that use big oak. Yeah, So, you know, wine, <clears throat> wine when you're doing tastings and doing tasting notes... You know, if you pick up a bottle of wine and look at the back of it and go, it's from this region, it's from this, it's from this and from this, you can maybe have a good guess as to yeah, what it tastes like. It's true. But there's nothing that substitutes actually picking up the bottle, knowing the producer, trying the wine and going, these are my tasting notes, this is what I like. And as I said, we're, we're not here to tell you what you should drink or no. shouldn't drink. Or what you think it tastes we're, like. We're, we're here to help you get to your next great glass of wine. Yeah. And if you put these tasting notes in and go, oh, I like something that's peachy and peary and grapefruity or whatever those notes are, we can go, well, if you like that kind of style, you might like this. To be it's, honest, even if you just say to us, I don't know why, but I loved wine number three. That's the best wine I've ever tasted. We've not, that, we've that not, even, got we'll what, we've not to, even got to wine number three. I know three we haven't yet. got to wine number three. That's are why you, are you preempting? I'm preempting it. But should, we, should we get wine through in the glass we, then, if you're preempting? Let's, let's, let's do that. That's an excellent idea. Dr. Lawson. Um, and uh, I don't know if I've pronounced that right. Viola, will you please tell me how to pronounce that? Because I would probably say Lawson, but uh, I don't know if that's correct. Um, wine is an art and a science, and it's all about having good taste buds as well. And it's about having individual taste buds. That's, that's very well said, Simone. So tell, tell me about this one. Or shall we... It's Riesling. It's Riesling. Oh, okay. It's Riesling. There we go. Good. So we are, we are in the Mosul, and I think Mosul's probably Germany's famous place for Riesling. We hear yeah. about Mosul, and we've got the really really steep slopes you know it's all slate this is this is on blue slate soil and you sit at the mosel and if you, you if you're at the top of one of these vineyards yeah literally you look at it it's beautiful it's all this terracing but if you were at the top of this vineyard and you had a glass of wine too many and stumbled mm -hmm. you'd be in the river yeah there's no stopping you going down there and it's back breaking work um we've got a wine later on that we'll we'll talk about um that you know the 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 vineyard is at 58 degrees Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's steep. That's not putting any tractors up there. So these wines start being hand harvested, people up and down and filling these things up. <coughs> Sorry. And this is why these wines start to become expensive because yeah. they're, they're labor intensive. It takes a lot of people and mm. a lot of hours to go up and hand pick every yeah. berry, bring them back down, back up, back out. So this is Dr. Lucen, this is Mosul, and they make lots of different wines, okay. lots of different that we wines. Have a, we, have a, we have a pronunciation check on that. It's more like Lawson. So there we go, okay. Lawson. Is, is that any better? Well, if we'll, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep working we'll on it. We'll keep working on it. We'll keep working, on, working on it. Yeah. Um, but, um, we, we, we suffer with English most so of the time. So this, this, is a, this is a wine that has a lot of words on it. Velena Sonnenhur. So that is the... Sundial Vineyard. The Sundial Vineyard, I see. So and then it says Riesling, it which says is Riesling. fair enough. It says Cabinet, which Means we'll come to in a sec. Put it in a wardrobe. Um, and it also says Predikatswein, which 
is, and then it says produce of Germany. So we're going to come into those, but just remember some of those words. So we've got we've got cabinet, we've got Predikatsvein, and those are those are probably the key things just to sort of remember. If you pick up that, hopefully by the end of this tasting, you might have some idea if you don't already of what those mean. Um, um, and when we dive, makes it. and when we dive into that a little bit more, both this wine and the previous wine both have the word cabinet on them. They do. One is 7.7 .7 grams of sugar, uh -huh. and this one jumps up a little bit to a mere 44 grams. But what this shows yeah. is, but then we look at the alcohol. The previous one is a little bit higher in alcohol, and this one is only 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 8%. Uh, happy okay. days, it's happy days. Um, so yeah, this is on classic, so, you know, it's ungrafted vines. Some of the vines that make this wine are 140 years old. That's old, that's up. That means, you know, there's not massive yield on it. Very, very intense flavors. Mm -hmm. um, this is just boom. This, this is, this is for me, this is my kind of Riesling. Yeah. I like this kind of off dry, those things that sit between about 35, about 60 grams of sugar is kind of mm -hmm. where I like, for my every, I say my everyday drinking Riesling. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's not my everyday, but this kind of style is what I like. <laughs> Slightly low alcohol, nice bit of chill on it. Yeah, so the world's a good place. And, you know, Dr. Lewison, Nelson, <laughs> um, um, makes and really, really, really good wine. Before we get into it, we, uh, we've got some, we've got some really, uh, really cool um, questions and tasting notes here. Mm -hmm. um, um, actually, we should probably move the the tasting thing on to wine number three. Oh no, we no. Are we supposed to talk about German wine law? Yeah, you were starting to get there. Oh, sorry about that. And then he was going to tell me later. I thought that was coming later. I thought no, we were doing wine news. I'm sorry, I, I haven't got the plan tonight. Let's let's he talk about. Amazing, I'm going to let him talk about right. German wine. I'm going to grab my notes because there's probably the driest there's, topic that we've ever covered in. There's uh, there's there's, there's, <laughs> lot, there's lots of numbers here, so I'm going to have the numbers in front of me. But numbers are good. As we go as we go into German wine law, it's meant to be a little bit fun. Yeah, we, do, we 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 say in all of our things, we try to stay away from all of the geeky terms and the uh, the terminology and the, the the words that you won't necessarily know and you pick up. But it the the challenge is, how do you do German wine without covering Oh, we words? we can do it like a coronavirus update. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, we are <laughs> we've got these kind of circles of intensity. Um and we'll get dive into each one as we go a little bit further. So basically in 1971, they changed some rules and regulations to get mm -hmm. German wine a little bit more standardized. People knew what they were drinking and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's been divided into these things. There's been other bits and pieces added on and tweaks and changes since. So we're doing a very, very broad overview. Yeah. So, you know, feel free to jump in the chat, but if you go, do you remember <laughs> that update they made in 2003? Yes, I do. But if we did all these <laughs> updates and all these changes, yeah. I would be here for the next seven hours and we wouldn't get to drink any wine. It's so true. the biggest the biggest area you have is Landwein, which literally translate as is your wine of the land, your mm -hmm. table wine that you'll see. It's also known as sort of Deutsche Weiner, isn't it? So Deutsche Weiner is any wine made anywhere that's made in Germany. Yeah. Landwein, all the grapes have to come from Germany. So you can ah. make a Deutsche Weiner, you, oh, you can get some stuff in from, from oh, Spain. I'm learning, happy times. Um, so... <laughs> so that's kind of your, your, your generalized just is what it is. We then go up to our Qualitats wine, which is our quality wines. And this is has to come from one of the 13 designated regions known as our Baugebiete. Once again, I'm here for the chat for any uh, qualifications on my pronunciation. <laughs> so this is when we talk about, you know, whether it comes from Mosul, Nahe, Air, where at Baden, whatever it is. Okay, um, and with that, we have a different levels of sweetness available. Is this where I say next slide, please? Next slide, please. Fair enough. So the Qualitas wine is about how much sugar is in the final wine. So we can hear of a wine that's a Trocken, mm -hmm. which is your dry style, which is up to about nine grams of sugar. Yep. We then go to our Hub Trocken. Here we go. Look, okay. got this for me. Um, which you didn't say next slide, please. This is the same, <laughs> same slide, next thing. All right. So literally it's half dry, and they've also got a... Um, a thing called classic. So Trocken is becoming a name selection and classic is replacing hard Trocken to be more standardized uh, okay. and more global. So um, that's why it says 12 to 15 grams because the hard Trocken was 12 grams and the new level at classic is 15 grams. There's also the uh, uh, fine herb classification which is a kind of general in the middle kind of thing. And then we get into our two sweeter category so we go up to 45 grams a litre and then we've got the Swiss wine which is above 
45 grams a litre. Yeah. So this is, you know, and there's some rules and regulations on what has to be hand harvested and all that kind of stuff, but that's where we go. So this is what our Qualitats wine is. Mm -hmm. um, and there's now Predicats wine as well. Oh, if, oh yeah, so you, before oh, we get oh, into you've, that... You've jumped in, haven't you? you but you're about to... You know, we, we are because... I'm about to speak in a funny language for we 100 are, hours. We are about to talk about very long, complicated words. And that, that is a fact of life when you're dealing with German language because uh, they have these things called compound words. And again, I'm sure that uh, there'll be some wonderful German people in the chat who will correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. Apologies. But yes, we thought, let's learn German. Because as they put these words together, these compound words, to make uh, a single word, um, it, it, it can be a little bit intimidating when you look at them it, because we don't know perhaps all of the individual words. But what we're going to try to do tonight with some of these is just to break it down. But, but some of these words get so long that they are called mammoth words or mammoth verta. And uh, that is a great name for it. So some of these words which come together uh, combine, you know, totally different things to produce something rather evocative. And I think, I think it's a great thing. Um, but some of them are hilarious because we've got, you know, Kraftfahrzeug Hauptpflichtversicherung, which is car insurance. And we also have, uh, I'm not going to read that, which is basically a label that goes on your beef. Label. But, uh, you know, Rindfleisch. So there we go. That's, uh, that is a long mammoth word there. Now we're going to get on to ones which are less scary. So don't be scared. Each of these things can be broken down into lots of individual words that you might understand and will make some sense. So let's go on. So he's, he's got his... We've addressed the elephant in the room. And we have the, oh, the mammoth in the, the room. The mammoth in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there we, so are. We, we had people saying, tell me about cabinets because it's something you like. And it turns out Absolutely. it's something the so, winemakers so, like. So what, what we used to have is you used to have Qualitats wine and then you had Qualitats wine mit Pradicat. Ah, so you had okay. the Qualitats wine with Pradicat, uh, which was QMP. Pradicat is kind of done in its own little bit now. So we start with cabinet. And what we have in with Qualitats wine, it's about how much sugar is in the product when it's finished. Yeah. Pradicat's wine is about the potential sugar and the potential alcohol. So yeah. it's how sweet the grape is. Mm -hmm. And there's a range between these things. Yeah. Um, and as, as we've seen with wine two and wine three, both cabinet, but one is much sweeter than the other. And cabinet literally translates as cupboard it because does, yeah. it was the um, it was the wine that the winemakers didn't want to sell to anyone else. So they take it to the side and literally put it in their cupboard. They, 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 they wanted to keep it, and and, and absolutely, it's it's to, <clears throat> you know it's to a lot of our modern tastes. It's on that sort of drier side. It's it's a greater thing. But remember, what we're not talking about is the final sweetness of the wine. So we're just going to talk about these words and how they come together. Because after cabinet, going riper grapes, you end up with spätlaser. Spät means late, and laser means harvested. So it is a grape that is harvested later. Therefore, more. More sugar. Sugar. Exactly. Easy and, as that. And that's, and that's particularly tricky for us wine geeks because we also hear of Spätburgunder, which is Pinot Noir, and Frühburgunder, which is uh, Pinot Noir Precoce, a precocious early ripening. So they, on that one, on Pinot Noir scale, Spät is late, right at the end, and here it's quite, a, quite soon at the beginning. So after Spät Leser, we have Auslaser. Which is... The end of the harvest. It is. It's the end. It's a you know you, you so you have like the way out. The, the else comes into all sorts of things, but it implies the sort of the end of it. So this is at the right at the very end of the process. You go out and you try to get your grapes and pick as them. you can see this picture across the top. This is a wonderful, it's wonderful a picture. picture. But this is just that. That's all riesling. Yeah. That's all riesling going through those different stages of ripeness. You know, from being a bright, fresh green grape to this shriveled raisin at the very end. And this is why you're able to make such amazing. It's, different it's styles true, of wine. so different. Even the colours are so different. But So we've got Aus plus Laser is harvested late. Now, here we are in Baron Aus Laser, which means berries. These are the grape berries specifically, um, and they select these individual bunches of berries at the very end, which are in the right condition that they look for. So that's, yeah. a, that's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. There's also, when you get to these top couple of levels, um, there's some rules and regulations that there has to be a little bit of betrite. There has to be betritus for to be a bear and laser, which is a, you know, it's an attack on the grape. Same as in Sauterne that gives it this delicious uh, honeyed kind of flavour. So there's a there's a middle one. There's a middle one next. Mm -hmm. There's a middle one, and I'm always concerned as to where I put this in the 
in the level of things because <laughs> because ice vine is its own kind of thing so it's got to have the same level of ripeness but it's based on harvesting in the middle of the night when it's frozen when it becomes below minus seven um and it's it's a bit sad and we're going to talk about it a little bit more more later on when we when we get into the wine news but in 2020 mm-hmm. you know how many wineries managed to make an ice wine one one wow didn't get cold enough there was not a oh. time that it was cold enough to get out of it 2019 how many made an ice wine none wasn't it nil point no so it, yep. it's it's kind of it's kind of scary that ice wine you know and what you got to bear in mind ice wine makes up 0.1% of german wine production it's it's not it's not a massive massive part of the industry but it's kind of something that people hang their hats on you know when you talk about ice wine you think germany and canada yeah and much more yeah. germany um, and i love canadian ice wine i'm not anti that so I, I think they make some great ones yeah. um, but you know ice wine it, ice wine could be a thing of the past it could, which is in, in, certainly in Germany. Re- yeah. Really, really quite or sad. But so. on to yeah. more positive things, we're going to talk about Trocken beer now, Slater. And Trocken, when we talked about quality yeah. of life, means dry yeah. because yeah. the wine is dry. In this thing, it's dry because the berry is dry. Because yeah, it's that in, tiny little raisin. When you have a grape, Mr. Winemaker, yep. you've got the skin on the outside, mm-hmm. and what do you have in the middle? Well, you have what's called the pulp, which the pulp, is this combination which is of water and sugar, sugar and, and acids acid and flavours. Not, not huge amounts of even those. Yeah. It's basically just the first So, thing. Yeah. when you dry it out, Mr. Winemaker, what yeah. goes away? Do the sugars go away? Nope. Do the acids go away? Nope. So the water goes away? Yep. So does that make it much sweeter then? It and intensifies it, does. Mr. Yeah. Winemaker. So, so trocken in this case is... The dried berries. Yeah, it's going to get way So, sweeter. beer and auslese. <laughs> so, it's the, the dried, specially selected berries harvested at the end late. Yeah. So, so, as, as somebody says in are. the comments, auslese taken as a whole does mean, indeed, the selected harvest. Absolutely. I'm just trying to sort of break these words down so that as you build it all up together, you get that idea of linguistically where it's come from. But there we are. So, trocken. Dried, barren, yeah. berries, else yeah. at the end, yeah. laser harvest. Yeah. Specially selected specially dried selected berries. Specially selected dried berries. And there is practically no juice that comes out of those. You have to squeeze the heck out of them. Well, you can end up with so- some of them being 300 plus grams of sugar yeah. per, per litre. It's nuts. It's absolutely yeah. insane. So we, we should quickly just flick on to this. So this now, this, this describes the styles of wines that they make. And what you'll notice we don't say is whether they are sweet or, uh, well, a, apart from, from the very ends of it, uh, we don't say whether they're sweet or not, because that depends on when you stop the fermentation. Absolutely. And this, this is what I think is A, great, but B, a little bit confusing because if you go up the levels and you look how much how much sugar you have yeah. there is a bit of an overlap in some places but generally it goes grape sweetness is low medium mm-hmm. high yeah so you would think you would be <clears throat> low medium high but as we go forward we'll have a look because we've got the option if we look at if we look at the potential alcohol level along the bottom yeah we can see that the potential alcohol level in a cabinet is about 10 percent you know sometimes a little bit higher sometimes a little bit lower um, but then if you go up to the next level and the next level, you can have a grape from the level above that should be sweeter actually have less sugar in it because it's fermented further and yeah. has higher alcohol. And then we have a wine that, you know, is fermented less, has lower alcohol, so it keeps more sugar. So we'll, we'll taste that as we go forward um, because we've got a spate lace um, as wine number four, and then we've got an house lace as wine number five. And you would think Auslese should be the sweeter one, but it's actually a couple of grams sugar less. Yeah. But the alcohol is different. And I'm kind of walking in circles right now. So the number- but, but even there, you can see there's overlaps and you can decide which category you want to be in. Let's say you've picked a grape at, you know, 80 Urschler. You know, and that fits between Cabernet and Schwett later. Um, so there are, there are at the lower end some overlaps, even before you make those choices in the fermentation, where you're going to stop it, where you're going to yeah. decide to. But it's actually, I think I, there's something I haven't covered, which is how do you stop fermentation, which is a topic before I got into it. I, I, I couldn't quite understand because... Kill the yeast. You've chucked 
billions of yeast into the, this, this grape juice and they're having a whale of a time. They are going party central. There's, there's so much sugar. It's what they love. They've got nutrients. They're, they're, they're happy. They're, they are reproducing and they're having a great time. So to stop the wine from fermenting, there's, there's really, uh, there's, you, you can do it a bit like the port guys do it, which and is fortify it. to fortify it, which is put in brandy so that the alcohol gets up to a level so that suddenly they, they die. Um, they can't operate in those high and that, and that level is generally around 15 percent ish around 15 yeah. percent is where your general wine making yeast doesn't like to play yeah. anymore there are some which can go a bit higher yeah. like, but the, like california's but, yeast but yeah about there but and 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 that that is that's one way and the other way you can do it is to cold crash the wine which is basically to chill it down as fast as you can because as you get to that point of the fermentation it's going really fast it starts to really get going. So if you want to say, I've picked that it's going to be that sweet, you have to go fast. And you, you fire on this cooling jacket that wraps around the, the stainless steel tank. And you drop the temperature down to as low as you can without freezing it. And then you run it through a filter that filters out all of those yeasts, so a sub-micron filter. And now suddenly you've got this beautiful sweet wine which is, renders us with a few problems, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's, that's, that's how you do it. But then when you open that wine, the moment you open it, it can start going again. So you can end up with a, a bit of a pop in your bottle if you leave it too long. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Perfect, so we should jump on because we need yeah. to get back to drinking wine. We do. Um, and this is you know, me trying to tell my story. So there's now another level of things that you can have, and this is the, the VDP. And this is based on vineyard site, so where the vineyard is. And for those of you who drink lots of Burgundy, it's a little bit like that. So you've got the, the Gutswein, which is your house wine that just comes from an area. Yeah, yeah so it just comes from... Van der Burgund. Uh, exactly. Okay, then we go up a level, and then we've got our Ortswein, which is a local vineyard site. So it's a named yeah. vineyard site. It comes from kind of a single place, which is a little bit like a, uh, a village wine yeah. in comparison. So this Recent is where you'd have a Macon or, village yeah. or something like that. We then go up another level and we have the Erslager, which is the first site, which is the same as our premier yeah. crew. So when we see our Chassagne Montrachets and our Pellini Montrachets and those kind of things, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we go to the very top level, which is our Gros Lage or a Grosses Gewech. And so a Gros Lage will be sweet and a Gros Gewech will be dry. So it's the same thing. And uh, we're very, very lucky that wine number six is one of these, these it is. sites yeah. um, today. So uh, these, these, these used to go for the same price as the top Bordeaux, not without, that long ago. Without, without a question of a doubt. So there's lots of different things and there's lots of different things that you'll see on a German mm. wine label. And it's just working out. If you, if you can see one of these, you know, these Ortswein, Gutswein, Grosslage, that's about vineyard sites, so you know kind of where it's going to come from, and then there's generally a name put behind it. If you see one of the Auslese, Spelese, the Predicates one, you, you can have a guess, you know, the sweetness level could be between this and this. And if you see a Qualitats wine, you know it has to come from a certain place, and then if it says Strogen or Hardrogen or whatever it has on it, you'll then know what your sweetness level could be. So you've got these yeah. three things that you'll see different places on different wines, um, but it, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a guide. So Fantastic. I'm going to we've, we've also got the fact that Gut means farm and Orts means uh, village. So so it's it is very similar to your you know your 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 village wines from France. So so that's that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, there so we, are. we need to we need to bring translators and specialists on we, with we, us. We do. To go. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Um, so this is where we are at with that. Um, so we should probably. You've probably all drunk it by now, but if yeah. you want to have a very quick, get your Dr. Lucent notes in, um, if you don't want to do your Dr. Lucent notes, just shout in the chat that you've drunk it all because we've talked too much about German wine law. And uh, at the same time, we can get wine number four in with my uh, 31 days of German wine key. Thanks very much. Peach, there's definitely peach in that. And I'm, I'm starting to get some of that petrol-y uh, characteristic coming in a bit more now into this. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but um, you know, it's a, it's a controversial opinion. A lot of people say, I don't want that in it. But you know, there's also some real recent geeks who absolutely love it. And I've had, I've had wines, I, I remember going to a, a really nice restaurant in Budapest where I had a Hungarian Riesling, and it blew your head off the, the petrol smell when you opened it. And it was sort of to the unbearable point. 
And I wasn't massively, massively keen on that. So, um, but, but equally a tiny bit of it, well, as long as it's in balance with the other things, I think can be a, a really delicious thing. But yeah, there's some definitely, it's, you'll, you'll see yourself going um, towards the sort of these, these, these riper fruits, peach. There's also some people talking about things like saccharin, slightly sort of artificial. Uh, he's, he's in heaven now. I could keep talking forever, then he will just sit there sniffing his Riesling. Quad demonstrandum. <laughs> Come on, pour us some Riesling. So what's, the, who's this? This is Schloss Johannesburg. So, this is where Riesling started in 1775. It um, is. Oldest. Oops. See, this is why you don't get any, because you're dangerous. Apparently dangerous. I haven't finished it. Yeah, exactly. So, this is Schloss Johannesburg. This is, uh, and Thank you. I, I love a lot of Rieslings, but this... Dan, this, do you want some? No, he doesn't. He's fine. <laughs> um, this was probably one of the first Rieslings that I had. So this and the wine that we got for wine number six, Lights, were, yeah. were two of the first producers when I first got into the wine industry that I got to taste as what should be the gold standard, what Riesling should, you know, and it's probably them. I, I love the, the prune wines and, I, you know, I don't... Everyone makes great Riesling, but, you know, when you have that bottle of wine that you go, yeah, that's something a bit magical... Yeah. And it's why does it go, this, this is why I love this grape and this is why I would follow this grape to the end of the earth and drink it forever. Um, so we're in the Rheingau and this is the Grunlach um, Schloss. So you'll see a fair few Schlosses around. Um, Which are they, castles, if I remember right, aren't they? We, we, we ask, the, ask the chat, they'll, they'll tell <laughs> us. They'll tell us because they're, they're great. Um, so yeah, the... The castle of this is absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Like it, it's it's like a fairy tale. Like if Disney World made a German princess castle, it would be what Schloss Johannesburg is. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Um, but they have you know different levels and different oh. styles. They've got their they've got their green seal as well. They've got a yellow seal. They've got their pink seal, which is their house lace. And it, it's absolutely absolutely beautiful, beautiful wine. My God, um, that's good. So this is it's got all different things on here because this is a this is a, a spat lacy. So that's in our mm -hmm. in our Pradicat So it can thing. be in two different systems at once, or in fact all of them really. All of them. So, so this yeah. is this is from the Rheingau. Rheingau. So it would qualify as a Qualitas wine. Um, but it's spate lace. Yep. And these guys uh, invented spate lace. They were the first people to pick it sweet ah. with a bit of noble rot on it. And this is also VDP Grosslage. So that means it's a uh, Indeed a sort of a Ron Cru site. Ron site um, yeah. And because it's Gross Lage rather than Gross Gavetch, it means it's going to be Sweet. Yeah. And this is indeed, this sits at 71 grams per litre. Um, and a lot of people go, uh, holy moly, that's going to be far too sweet. I think but, I'd rather have this instead of a pudding, to be quite but, honest. For a but, 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 if you drink something that's 71 grams a litre sugar, that's something like Coca-Cola. Yeah, that's where I'm at. And that is sweet and sticky and whatever. What does this have that makes it not sweet and sticky? Dan, do you have the answer? He doesn't, because he's over there producing. Acid. Acid for all you acid hounds out there. Hashtag acid hound. I like that. That should be trending. And what's really <laughs> important with Riesling is you've got to have this yeah. balance between sugar and acid and alcohol and fruit. And you put it all together. Uh, th th this is a wine I, you guys can do the tasting because I'm just going to sit here and go. He's just going to melt into his chair. But um, uh, it's funny because for me, the desserts that I really like also have that balance. I, I love things like a lemon tart because there the sugar is balanced by the citrus. You're a lemon tart. Oh, he's got in there. Fantastic. Oh, no. I'm going to have to get revenge next time. Um, <laughs> but, but yes, it's... It's, if you take something like a, a, a sticky toffee pudding, and there's a place in the world for sticky toffee puddings, I'm sure, but it's not massively my thing. It just, it's stodge and it's sweetness and it doesn't do much. But, but for me, those ones that cut through have got that. So we've got in this honey and pineapple. I think pineapple is a particularly good demonstrator of that because pineapple also has that balance of acidity and oh, sweetness. sweetness. Absolutely. Um... Strawberries, we're even getting some red fruits in there. But the lychee, which was on the first taste, I, I, that was what I got immediately on the nose. Alex is going to talk for a minute. Cause <laughs> I, 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 there is lots of acid in Coca-Cola too. That is absolutely correct. And again, that, that gives that balance. And I have to say, I am a bit partial for a Coca-Cola. Now, these are glasses by Riedel, which is a, a probably the most famous wine glass company. Um, and they liked this. these are their Riesling glasses. 
optimized for trying to get the best out of Riesling. Yeah, it makes the it taste very Rieslingable. It, it, oh, God's sake. As Dan has his head in his hands. Um, but uh, Coca-Cola, that, that um, uh, uh, Perdita mentioned, um, uh, that also has a Riedel glass, doesn't it? That you can get the perfect Coca-Cola glass designed to make that taste well. Because, you know, you can make, you can make things. Is it as complex as these? No. But it's still, it's, it's fun, and it's right. They've, they've created something with good balance. Um, and that is, uh, that is delicious. So, so I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still here. I'm still here. We should talk briefly about the Rheingau, because we did mention it more in the, 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 the Discoverer. So Rheingau is, it's along this, this part of the river which goes, and I've got this right now, from east to west. So it's flowing from east to west, um, uh, sort of from Mainz. And it's, uh, oh yeah, just, just so, right, there's... Right, there we are. Can right, anyone right. actually see that though? But they, they probably can't. It's up see here. It, right, uh, right up there. And um, yeah, so it's it's just along that part. So it's along the northern banks of the river of the river Rhine. And um, here the river gives some real atmospheric influence. It, it gives warming when it's too cold. It gives cooling when it's too hot. Um, and it's mod moderating. It's a moderating say. influence. It's absolutely moderating influence. But where it is not moderate. In these steep and absolutely picturesque slopes they are so beautiful um, they really are and um, you've got slightly flatter vineyards on the other side of it but uh, on the other side of the river but the yeah it just it gets progressively bumpier until you get to this one final sort of dramatic dive down to the river and on those slopes people strap these massive sort of um, crates to their backs as they go up and down these slopes um, trying to collect the grapes and try it to strap is, on the back. It is literally back-breaking back work. It's, it's just, just, just atrociously hard. I go for the, uh, if, if I had to pick someone to do a harvest stuff, yeah, that, that, that wouldn't no. be mine. Somewhere flat. I go to Navarra in Spain, just flat, wander around, done. Valley mm. floors of Napa Valley, that'd do me well. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're in Napa Valley, you'd probably drive a monster truck up to the top of the hill anyway, so... Let's do that. Yeah, sounds good. Anyway, we're digressing That's slightly. That's lovely. That but, is but, you know, so it, 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 it's funny. Um, where you go back um, to now to the previous wine, if you did have any left of that, you'd suddenly take, see that previous wine in a totally different light in terms of the sweetness. Oh, and if you went back to the first wine at five yeah. grams, you go, yeah, I think, I think the one at seven, um, the Wiegmuller, is where people start to notice there is some sweetness to it yeah. because it, it's noticeable that it's, it's not just dry, dry, dry. But then you put it against that, it yeah. would taste, whoa, that's high acid. It would be a shock to the system if you went back to it. So somebody was saying with the wine three that they didn't feel that it had that much acidity, but it was also it was the same person who'd been eating sort of mayonnaise salads and, um, and breakfast. So that's, that's quite interesting because that coats your tongue and sort of protects it against the acidity. What you can do to sort of to tell that acidity is it's a bit disgusting. You probably don't want to do this, but if you just try oh, to sort of, okay, I'll, I'll go I'll, on. I'll demo. If I'll go have on to pour demo. some more of this then. You can. It's you, basically it's how much you salivate, and I'm sure Jamie can be ultimately. So disgusting. basically, you're gonna have to talk this along because my mind. All right, that's fine. So, but so basically, you'll take a sip of the wine, mm -hmm. draw it into your mouth, sort of swirl it around, swallow it, put your head down. Yeah. And just open your mouth. And just wait. To, you can even leave your mouth shut if you like. But if you open your mouth, it's much more fun. It, it, it's it now. But um, yes, you will find... The wine show did depict those extreme slopes, you're right. Um, it, it just... You, you feel that saliva coming out. And it's, it's your body's natural defence mechanism against that acid, trying to protect your teeth. So that's probably why we shouldn't be drinking too much of this. But as a special treat wine, why not? Yeah, why not? No more, than, no more than two bottles a day. And, and um, Julie thinks this goes beautifully with blue cheese, which, again, is actually not surprising because if you think about your ice wines, that's a, always a classic The richness, the creaminess, that sweetness. And the sweetness in the wine will bring out those kind of like rich flavours in the blue. Um, it I really feel will. like you're it not just... looking at me. I can't. It's really, really weird, but that's fine. It's because I'm not. He's determined to sure. impress, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. and do swallow afterwards. Absolutely. Um, right. But, yeah, that's that's a heck of a wine. I like that a lot. That's lots of fun. Lots of fun. Um, and, yeah, 8% alcohol, so mm. it's good for you. Am I allowed to say that? Probably not. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Should we move on? We we're should. Gonna have something should we have a Riesling next? 
Sounds reasonable. So, we're going up in the sugar level in the uh, mm -hmm. pre-harvest grapes. So we are going to Auslese. Um, we're going back a few years. We're going to 2015, so we've got a bit, a bit age on this. So we yeah. might have, you know, if we see where there's most of the reasoning so far, it'd be basically almost clear, maybe a bit lemony in colour. Yeah. And yeah. This might start to have a little bit of colour, maybe a little bit more golden. Um, but what is interesting about that? So the, the spec they say, 71 gram sugar, 8% alcohol. <laughs> Sorry, the first wine tasting has come in this dentistry. <laughs> I love it. I might have poured it yet, and we've got dentistry. My word. So what we're going to do is... We're going to pour this. We're going to have a little look at it. Yeah. Have a little sniff. But, so this is less sweet. Not by a lot. 68 gram sugar. But we jump up to 12-ish. Is that right? 11 and a half. Yeah, 12% alcohol. alcohol. So, but we can see we've got this... Compared to that, we've got that. We've got yeah, massive a difference. A fair chunk more color. It's a bit green as well, slightly and on the color. Riesling, Riesling can age. Oh. Riesling can age. I was lucky enough when I uh, was was in the states. I, I got to do a, a wine tasting with some Rieslings back to the mid seventies, and they were still bright, fresh, amazing, mm. great acidity. Because things that preserve things: acid, alcohol, and sugar. So Riesling, Riesling's that perfect thing to age because it's got all of them. Happy days. That's true. So this is. Uh, Lewis Guntram, and this is a, we're in the Rheinhessen. Um, they've been around a while. The family's been growing grapes since you know the mid 1600s. I think it's 1648. Um, but sustainable farming for those who like a bit of sustainable farming. Um, and yeah, once again, it's all it's all stainless steel, all done as a bright, fresh style of wine. This is the other side of the Rhine from from the last wine from the Rheingau, and um, it's 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 larger, sort of uh, quite quite flatter areas, but. Um, Still, quite small vineyards. All of the vineyards you tend to be quite on the small side, but they they produce. I'm going to stop you. Whoever put baked pineapple is a genius. That is a very very good note. Very good note. I like that a lot. But yeah, it's a, it was a wine region which was not massively known for for quality. It was more the people who were producing, you know, vast quantities of stuff for, for the, the the exported and the bulk wines, and yet. There, there's no reason for it. There, there. But I, th I think I think what we've got to always always understand with wine is there, there's a lot of generalisations. Yeah. So you can take a region and go, oh, it's this, and it just makes bulk wine. It doesn't. But there's always going to be these little pockets and these little producers who go, you know, what, I can make quite, something quite special here. Yeah. There's all these guys around me who are just, you know, big yield, chuck it out the door, make some wine, get it in a bottle, happy days, whatever you want to do. And there's, wherever you go in the world, whatever region you go into, there's always someone somewhere who's doing something a little bit special, a little bit different. And I think that's what we need to look out for. We, we can't have these blanket statements yeah. that you go, XYZ only makes bulk wine. Well, you know, the perfect example is, you know, we, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you might remember when we were back in Australia, Bob Burton, you know, he, he, he produces wine you can buy in the co-op. And... In the, all the supermarkets, and yet he also as you can has tell, Mister Mister Mister, I like Flavio Joe here doesn't shop at the co-op. Did you hear how he said that? I live next door to the co-op. I'm very happy with co-op, <laughs> but apparently you can get the wine in a co-op. I, I said other supermarkets more may be available, but not 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 not, not, not anyway. to you apparently. I only go for artisan, um, you know, for, for organic fruit. For I thought prices. you only bought your wine from Tring Winery. I, well, I, I I get my wine from Tring Winery, of course. But um, that's that's superb. That's delicious, isn't it? And um, yeah. So, I've got to go and find wine number six, because we've got such a limited amount. Um, I didn't allow me and Alex to open a bottle tonight, so I've, I've brought a, a spare pouch back for us to share. But, while I go and find these wines, I'm going to hand him over, because I think one of the biggest tasting notes that people generally put as a basic for Riesling is people talk about this petrol note, or this mm. gasoline note, where I grew up in wine. Yep. Um, and why is that? Because there's different things. Some people go, oh, it's just part of the grape. Some people say it's sunburn. Some people say it's this, that, the other. Some people say it's yeah. old Riesling has it. Yep. However, there's a chemical. And it is. Alex, should talk about this. I'm going to try to talk about this, knowing that we probably have people who know more about chemistry on the, on the, uh, uh, the oh, chat. Oh, we can bring them, we them, bring them in. But, bring them in. but if anyone wants to join in, uh, please do. Uh, I, I, I want to get the right information out there. But... And if, um, it, and if he bores you, start drinking wine six. Yeah, just, just anyway, you know. I'll be back. Don't worry, it's, it's not too geeky. I'm not 
going too mad. I don't like describe the exact chemical formulation on page one of this, do I? Oh no, I do. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You started right okay. there. Anyway, yeah. I've got my sunglasses anyway. on. I'll see you later. TDN and that next bit, it does not matter too much about what it means because it just translates to that slightly petrolly smell that we we know and associate. And like I said, some of them it blows your head off. And um, we've had one comment that was, it just it just came for you know is is it down to having an aged riesling? And often it is. Often it is. But often it goes up and down, and, and, and that sounds a very strange thing to say, but you have to remember that wine is a living, breathing thing. Anyway, the first question is, what, how could wine possibly smell like petrol? What on earth is going on? Um, and it turns out that this, this chemical that's being produced uh, in the grapes themselves is actually, it, it's what, it, what, what gets produced in the grapes is called a precursor but it makes this TDN at the end of the day. And if you look at what is on the right, benzene, that's one of the sort of, you know, restricted chemicals that is in petrol. You know, the, petrol is called benzene in various different countries or the local equivalent thereof. And what you see is this, this hexagon, this ring of six carbon atoms. And here you've got two of them merged together. It's a remarkably similar chemical. And it turns out that we are stupidly sensitive to it. So. For us to be able to smell it, it's two micrograms per litre, which is just a, a utterly ludicrously small amount of it that, that, that's needed for you to detect it. Um, and the, the, the two things that ultimately start off causing it are sun exposure and water stress. So it's, it's grapes that grow in slightly drought conditions in very bright sunlight. Those are the two things that, that start off this whole process. After that, they create this, this group of chemicals called carotenoids, and it doesn't really matter what those are. But then the grape goes through this process called veraison, where it changes colour, either from green to sort of silvery grey, or from green to red, if, uh, or, or purple if it's a, a darker grape. And then the sugar is really starting to form. And at that point, those chemicals bind with some of the sugar. And then they leave this whole store of this sort of hidden um, the starting point, let's say the, the flour and milk and eggs of your, of your cake are sat there in the mix. Now, the moment you start fermenting it, that then brings some of those out and creates a little bit of that. So just after you put a Riesling into bottle, it can quite often have quite a bit of this TDM. But there are other ones where you leave it a little bit longer and nothing happens and it tastes absolutely fine. Then you go and get your aged um, Riesling out of the out of your cellar or your cupboard or whatever it wherever your, it's been. Your, your cabinet. My, my cabinet indeed, yeah. And that bottle aging process, a, a different process has gone on that then recreates that and suddenly you pop it open and you've got that petrol smell. But to avoid it, the real thing you've got to do is avoid that sun exposure and water stress. Um, so it comes and it goes. Up to half of it, when you bottle it, can be mopped up just by the cork in the first two years. So if you've got a reason that's got a screw cap, then there will actually be you're more likely, often, to, you're more likely to have that petrol smell. So this happens wherever you are in the world. It's nothing to do with Germany per se. It, Aussie Rieslings can have 250 micrograms in, in that. And is that because generally there's more sunshine, more, more, sunshine, more sunshine, more sunburn? And more screw caps. So... It's and more screw cap, I suppose, yeah. yeah. You know, you're, what, 75, 80% of Aussie wines in a screw cap Exactly. Now, isn't it? So what they're trying to do now is normally when you're trying to sort of, um, uh, in your, you're working in your vineyard, you strip the leaves away from where the fruit is, all of those grapes hanging down. You want to get the sunlight onto them to help them ripen up, develop those beautiful flavours. And you also want to heat up the cane, the, uh, the, the stick, because it sounds stupid, but heating that stick up actually makes the vine produce more grapes in the following year. And that is a very weird thing, but, but that's why they do it. So growers are trying to sort of balance these two things now. They're going, oh, well, if we strip all these leaves off, then we'll get more grapes next year. Um, but we'll but also, also we might burn our grapes. Burning our grapes and having this year. stuff that smells like petrol, either now or in a few years' time. So what they've started to do is to strip some of the leaves, but just leave this one sort of layer of grapes that acts like a sunshade, which I think is pretty quite quite a cool little thing and also yet again very laborious so it all feeds into this German wine is a, a, a real sort of 
you know, it's, it's a, a, a process of love. You have to love it to, to want to make it. So that's enough about TDN and petrol smells. But yeah, um, like we said, there can be a bit of it and you can love it. There can be too much of it and you can hate it. Um, it is part, 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 it's part of the, the it's, course. It's part of the experience. It's part, it's part of the reasoning world. It's part yeah. of the reasoning world. And once again, if you, if you know that a particular vintage was particularly hot, you might have a, you know, you'll know there's a, a better chance of it having that kind of characteristic. If you mm -hmm. love that characteristic, you go after it. If you don't love that characteristic, you don't, yeah. and it's the same with anything. If you if you like the dry styles, let's find something dry. If you like the sweeter styles, I don't think any close. of these here tonight have had even what I'd call close to too much that it, it's it becomes offensive. Um, and I, I would just say that the one that I've had I too had, much of you, you've become offensive. <laughs> oh no, he's off on one now. This is the serious one. We've just done chemistry. Oh, I, I God, know, but anyway. I'm bringing you back down to earth. You so are bringing me uh, back down to earth because we should probably open wine number six. We should open so wine I think number some six. Some people already uh, drunk it, but that's probably good. probably well in. Let's so. move on to. Oh no, hold on. Oh, where's wine six gone? Oh, it's lost oh, it. Oh, no. Sorry. I've lost the slide, so you're not going to get to comment on it. Put it in the chat. Put your taste in, in the, the chat. chat. Yeah, pop it in the chat. Um, Julia loves a good petrol Riesling. Caroline says, number six would be my rebound wine, and I've had it when I need a bit of rough after number five. I think that's possibly one of the... That's the wrong wine, dude. He's only going to got the wrong box. <laughs> I'll be back. I think it's in the fridge, isn't it? It wasn't. Uh, I, I don't think so. There have been. So Jamie just poured the wine. And it was red. If you missed that, um, so uh, there have been people who've made rosé rieslings. Now, how how would you make a rosé riesling? Well, I'm mean, unfortunately, it's a it's a entirely marketing thing. The riesling cannot be rosé. It it just can't. But you can still call it a riesling if it's eighty five percent riesling. And so, what do they do? They stick a bit of something else in Pinot Noir, Zinfandel. There was, I think, California were doing sort of pink Rieslings a while back. Um, I don't think that's particularly my cup of tea, but if you love it, why not? Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 um, it's not supposed to be red. And uh, I, have you looked at the bottom of that? Hey, on today's genius. I bought that wines of Germany from the warehouse. Ah. Not wines of Riesling. So, <laughs> Everyone at home gets to drink this, and we do not today. We drank it the other night, though. So we did drink it the other night. We we, we had a we had a little tasting of this on on Tuesday night. Food coloring. Yeah, how would you make rosé riesling food coloring? That would also so work. To be probably fair, be banned there, in some there countries. Is in New Zealand, a couple of people making rosé riesling. Oh, I was saying there's some in California as well. Yeah, but so yeah, um, you'd you'd probably just add a little bit of uh, a different grape because yes. there's a lot of things that you know most places you can have. A little something in there and well, not I mean, have like to I tell anybody. Said. Oh, well. No. <laughs> okay, fine. How are we doing on time? But look, look, that's, uh, I think, wine number five is is my favourite of the five wines tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so, so tell me about wine number six, because let, let's start with the, the, the fact is that we couldn't buy the wine that we initially wanted because someone else had it, didn't they? Yeah, so we, we were trying to pick and try and get something that was a little bit older, and I called someone and said, can we, can we get a little bit of this? And they're like, unfortunately, it's all been held for the fat duck. So I had to go back to my... my you're a my fat fun. duck. Oh, he asked for that, didn't he? <laughs> okay, anyway, he's getting silly at the end. <laughs> Sorry, so my apologies for the manager. So we have got, we've got the Light Riesling Grosslager, and get this in the glass, 2013 vintage. It's You've got this deep, dark yellowy colour that just does not look like a re what you would think a Riesling should be. Um, but this wine is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, Johannes Leitz is, um, is the winemaker. Joseph Leitz is, you know, his reputation one of the best, best wine growers in the Rheingau. Um, and they make the, these single vineyard gross lager kind of wines. They make, you know, one of my first Rieslings that I ever had, they, they, they made one that gave over to the States called the Dragonstone Riesling, which was low alcohol, medium sugar and it was just it was lovely and quaffable and it was one of those you know being on the restaurant floor all night in washington dc where it's 40 degrees and humid <laughs> it was that end of the night Caroline's go with it up in a couple of weeks. oh lucky caroline was she inviting us can we come <laughs> um so this is um this is their gross lag berg kaiser steinfelds and if you've got your little booklet in front of you towards the back page there's a picture of that vineyard in there and it's absolutely insane. It's, you know, 
58 degrees. It's just mentally stupid. And if you go, if you, and if you go onto the lights website, it's really, really cool because they've got all their different vineyard sites and there's a little thing that oh, you yeah, can kind of flick through. Tool. It's interactive and it's just like the tracks are going up at like the different <laughs> angles for the vineyards. I think their steepest one is at I think 68 or 72 degrees. It's something stupid like that. It's almost, almost vertical. The, it, it's dangerous. It's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing up there. Um, but I think this shows it's not the oldest reasoning in the world by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's you know, 2013. But you can see how it's developed. You can see how there's more nuttiness about it. You can see how there's more, you know, richness in there. Um, but it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful, beautiful drop of wine. Um, so, what is there any thoughts in the chat of what people think about that? If we've not got a tasting notes. Uh, Caroline says she may or may not be demanding Riesling now with every course. Um, uh, I think. Um, uh, Vila would have preferred us to have put it at the end um, because it's tr tricky to taste off the sweet wines. I think the, the thing there is that this one has so many more layers of complexity from the, the tertiary developmental characteristics, yeah, but it is a trade-off. It, 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 it's, 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 it's always an interesting thing when we try and decide which order to yeah. put the wines in. Sometimes it's very, very easy and you go, here's a medium, light, heavy yeah. white, here's a medium, light, heavy red. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's like, did we want to go from dry to sweet yeah. or did we want to do that and put what I thought was like the unique older wine yeah, at the so, end? So this being a um, sort of a gross lager, you, you kind of want to finish and, with the best. The and, most, and, and it's also, you know. it's also, you know, in the world, you know, and we'll, we'll pop them up in the minute, but mm -hmm. it, it's it's the most premium wine of the night. So, you know, we, we've kind of got to stick it to the end. And I think it's the one that stands out as being the most different in style as what, to what I think people expect yeah. from a Riesling. And I just really, really lucky. We, we got... 36 bottles of it there's no more um yeah, and i think it. we it's gone. i think we've got about eight to sell so if you love it dive in get there's it a, there's a general because... shortage of wines in this country at the moment because well there's a general shortage of everything in this country at the moment because of a combination of well, all sorts of things as you quite well know yeah. and you don't want us to go into yeah. but so that's 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 should we let people is, vote but... on the wines of the uh, night I, I think i think they should yeah. so yeah so let, let's have Do a little you... let's have a little look at wines of the night uh, you love that picture you, you i can't back? Oh, Dan, could you go to the Poly V? Uh, oh, what's happened? Thank you. There we go. There we are. There we are. That should he be up there. He was so obsessed with TDN that he just left it on there for you all day. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at my presentation. <laughs> um, so um, we should very quickly, because we got all excited about the tech notes while people vote, we should probably do the wine news. We should, yeah. So Connor's um, just saying that we got stone and tropical fruit still, but... Some real development, so nutty and toast, and that's absolutely right. What you're going on, yeah. And you compare it to some of those sort of, um, uh, you know, the 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 Chenin Blancs that are aged and those kind of things. And how would you sort of describe the difference, really? I just think you go and it's Riesling does kind of what we describe a lot when we talk about red wines. You've got you've got your primary flavors, so you've got your your peach, your pineapples, your apricots, those kind of things. There's not really a lot of secondary stuff because there's not really that barrel fermentation. Yeah. They don't really find the vanilla or clove. But you definitely start getting these developmental tertiary flavours where mm -hmm. we get these kind of the dried fruits and the nuttiness um, that comes with a little bit of age, a little bit of development. So you're looking at having those those tertiary age styles that there's, there's no other wine in the world that does things like this. No. Apart from maybe Australian Semillon. Yeah, yeah. You're say Australian I'm, Semillon I'm is, is, is its own, own beast. <coughs> but reasoning across the board... If it's older, is it better? That's a personal preference. Of course. Um, you know, is it great? It's different. It it's, it's different. It's, and that's the point. Some people love old Riesling because they like this nuttiness yeah. and this toastiness that comes with it um, and these deeper flavours. Some people like a young Riesling because they just like bright, fresh acid. Somebody want, some people like a, a sweet Riesling because they have it with dessert. And that's what I say. I, 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 I would challenge anyone to come and sit with me and go, I don't like Riesling and give me you know, an hour of their time to try some stuff, and yeah, they would yeah. go, no, I, there's still not a Riesling I like. Um, because it's, it's that broad, and it's that great, and it's such a cool wine. Um, and I love wine in general, but, but Riesling has a special place in my heart, and I do get a bit bouncy, and a bit geeky, and a bit silly, and a bit over the top with it. Um, I've never put a Pinot Noir tattoo on No, no, indeed. Yeah. Um, and and that, that's what's important. And... We could, I could, I could have 
I could do this tasting 50 times over with different wines if people want to sign up. And we yeah, could do, I wouldn't go to we your New Zealand we, ones. We, or... we, we could have the online Riesling Tasting Club. <laughs> if people want don't, that, don't I'm very, very happy. <laughs> I, um, but it's been great fun. It's been really cool. Um, but no, should we, we find out what the winners are? Well, yeah. We, I thought we were going to do the wine oh, news. Oh, we're going to do the wine news. Like, yeah, okay. All right. So yeah. I'm going to turn the Poly V uh, off. Off. And then we'll go back to the votes. Don't then we'll do the prices. Works. And then yeah. Dan's going to sing a song. He went, to, uh, he, went to, good. he went to Tom Jones last night. Oh, he did. That's, not, that's not unusual. Um, oh, God. So, wine news. Look, we're only going to do one item in the wine news because there is only one thing to talk about, which is the devastating flooding that has been happening in, uh, in Belgium, in Germany, in the Netherlands, um, but mostly in Germany. And, you know, I think the, the death counts alone that they know about is up to Over nearly... 200. It's, it's just sort of around that 200 mark. And... Um, there are countless more missing and it's just atrocious and I think um, when you look at uh, the the region that's been really really hit just sort of south of uh, Bonn and Cologne is is the this Aare Valley or the Aare Valley and um, that um, that is a beautiful winemaking region we haven't tasted any of their wines tonight um, but um, I, I'll just bring up a picture because it's it's absolutely staggering in this shot right that side you can see at this is a standard normal street in the town and you can see people's wine barrels and cars and trucks and all of the things that they rely on for their business have just been just swept away and along with the roads and the bridges that they need to cross the river every day so it's it's heartbreaking and we are all sending all of our best wishes but if there's something you want to do practically um Jancis Robinson, uh, go and Google Jancis Robinson German Fund, and she's raising some money to try to to support those those people in that region. Um, and so we we implore you do go and have a look at that and um, help these people out in their time of need and Absolutely. get these winemakers to recover all of the their, that's their lost you know just like we talked about in the fires of of South Africa. That's not just the, the this year thing. It's everything they've ever made. But I, and I think it is. And, you know, it's, it's the end of the evening and yeah. we don't want to go, go out on a down point. But it's just that stress that we, we're seeing. This, this climate change is changing regions. You know, it's, it's wiping out wineries, whether it's a wildfire, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's, you know, flooding like this. It, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely horrific. We, you know, we touched earlier that Germany's not making any, any ice wine because it's getting warmer. So, you know, we, we need... You know, people are changing what they're doing with wine. People are changing what they're growing and stuff like that to try and combat this. Um, but you know, you start seeing things like this, and there's not going to be wine. They're not going to no. be able to rebuild and it's, stuff like it's that. It's already bought to with, with without so, the support, without yeah. people buying the wines, drinking the wines, supporting them and stuff like that. So, so, so when we can go back to Germany, go and explore it. It is a beautiful, beautiful country, and the wine regions, whether you go down the wine route in Faltz, um, uh or explore further you know I've, I've done all sorts of the, the river regions around um around Cologne and Bonn and um and, and down into sort of the Baden region where you've got like I've mentioned before these staggering thermal spas the Terima um and they're, they're on a different level to anything you go to you go here and you can go to a sauna and have a massage and there you go to a sauna world a sauna welt um, it's it's a, incredible. It's a beautiful place. So please go drink their wine, go and visit them, and um, uh, and, and help them recover. And um, yeah, but, uh, be but, open minds to German wine. But which wine are they going to drink? Which wine are they going to drink? Let's see, shall we? So it's wine five. Oh, people have a sweet tooth. That's fantastic. Look at that. That. that surprises me that's very interesting everybody was meant to pick wine four everyone was meant to pick wine four but that means more wine four for me why, why were they meant to pick wine four because it's this that was spectacular but but yeah look so the house from louis guntram is fantastic um we had this up the, the other night didn't we yeah. the, the the sweeter red wine one mm. and i think people have been so long just drinking should, dry should, we, should we pop the prices up so people can see what the yeah, prices are compared sure. compared Let's to do that what it is. So, yeah, the uh, the aspect once That's... again, once again, it shows that spending the most money doesn't always give you the most favourite wine. No, but but I bet there's 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 lots of people who love the wine six and lots of people who love the wine four. There was a nice there was a um, nice split. No, no, nice nobody split. didn't get a vote. No, and that and, and that shows that 
different wines for different people and Indeed. that's what's hugely important um so what do we got next month so next month on discoveries we're doing argentina we are and then next month on adventures we are doing pinot yeah so we've got not just pinot noir not just Pinot Noir. All so, the Pinot. I don't think he quite knows what he's in for because me and Caroline <laughs> have been having a chat. Oh, no, um, have you? So we're going to do three white Pinots in the, yeah. uh, the degree and the Blanc category. And then we're going to do three Pinot Noirs. And you get to pick one. I'm going to pick one. And Caroline's going to pick one. And Ooh. see who can pick the best Pinot Noir in the world. In the world. Wow, um, that's, do, that's quite a challenge. You, you, okay. You've got to pick from France because, say... So, that's what you do. Apparently, apparently, and there is no. So, so, there is so no. The person who literally turned up to Sachi Mormon and Raj Pa's winery goes, please, can I see around? <laughs> to be fair, there's there, there's no budget for clothes. There's though. no budget for for, for for half of the things. But yes, do we ship overseas? Um, it's very difficult at the moment, unfortunately. Um, it it really is. Uh, we we. We've, we've tried to ship things to Sweden, to Germany. The Germany ones, not one of them has got through. Italy, I think it took three weeks. Sweden, it took four weeks. I don't know yeah. why. Um, so we're, we're trying to work on the it's logistics. So, it's something, there. yeah, it's, it's legit. Logistics are the big problem at the yeah. moment. We're getting stuff abroad and through customs and done and stuff like that. When we can get it and we have a system in place that we know the wine will yeah. arrive on time, intact, in good condition, we we love to do that. You know, we've got we so many people worldwide. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, tonight, um, my my wife has disappeared to Wisconsin, and she she took her packs with her. So she's probably watching from Wisconsin at the moment. So, uh, can I I can say hi, can't I? Yeah. Hi to Wisconsin. Absolutely. Um, hello, so, hello, America. So so if you if you've got a friend who wants to put them in their suitcase and bring them to you, happy to send them. Um, but on that note, we've got Pinot next month. We've got Argentina next month. Um, the wines are all available to buy. If you love them, please get them in. If you buy six bottles, the shipping's free. Yep. Um, you know, and and you're supporting the wineries. And if general. you're and if you're if you're new to us, um, have a look. We've got we've got old video. We've we've been we've got what twenty two shows now. So well, we've got go, all the wines from well most of the wines from those. Most shows. of the wines. Some things are out yeah. of it, but we can do some swaps and stuff like that. But go back, look at our old stuff. If you go, oh, I fancy yeah. wines in New Zealand. We have fancy wines in Spain. We can get you know full bottle tasting sets out to you so you can hang out with your mates and have a drink or you can just watch it and listen to my bad puns and see how bad Alex's shirts and songs are because um, I, I think our next project we're well, going to give up on this wine tasting we, thing and just create a uh, uh, now 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 that's song. what I call wine puns we we we, we, we uh, for those of you who were unfortunate or enough to be on our last tasting we we did do a little bit of a song and we will we will recap that but you'll be very glad to know that when after we we uh, did that several people on twitter said that we should be doing some uh Rammstein. and i'm not doing that so we're not going to do that no but hey but if you want them to sing a song send us an email put it in the credit put it in the chat <laughs> we're there. but anyway it's been yeah. an absolute pleasure it's been a lot of fun um thanks a, so much thanks to everyone for joining in thanks to wines of germany for for the support the, the swag the videos it just helps bring it to life and it make does. it a lot it a lot does. of fun and um thanks to uh no one ordering too much of this. It's yeah. for me now. Anyway, have a great <laughs> night and let's uh, roll credits. Thanks very Take much. Take care. Good night. Yes. It must be reasoning that is king of the castle. There must be a reason why it lights up Jamie's soul From Deutschland where it is made in a castle The Germans really make the finest examples of you Must be the reason that is king of the castle From dry to Uber sweet is great makes them all Find it in Australia or even California But Germans truly make the finest examples of you The Riesling that is king of the castle There must be a reason why it lights up Jamie's soul From Deutschland where it is made in a castle The Germans really make the finest examples of you Must be the Riesling that is king of the castle From dry to Uber sweet is great, makes them all Find it in Australia or even California 
but Chamas truly makes the finest examples of the earth.